Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary, where I do the research to try to teach you a little something about what you're drinking. Today, we're going to be going over the Telesker 10, which is a whiskey, kind of one of those ones that I can't believe I haven't reviewed yet, um, specifically just anything from Talisker. In fact, about six years ago, when I started this channel for my dad's 60th birthday, I bought him a bottle of Talisker Storm, and I've gotten him much more whiskey since then. But at the time, it was actually, he shared it with me, and it was the first time I ever had Talisker as well. So it's been a long time. It's something I remember fondly, and I kind of want to talk to you guys about the Talisker 10. So let's first go into the distillery. The Talisker distillery is on the Isle of Skye, which is off the northwest coast of Scotland. It's connected by a bridge, and it's known for its historical uh, medieval castles and its fishing villages and its rugged landscape. And the landscape will really matter when we're talking about the nosing and the tasting here. You're going to kind of get it, right? So if history is to be believed, Kenneth and Hugh McCaskill. I'm saying McCaskill. I don't know if I'm getting that wrong. There's a capital A in the middle of the word. I don't know what to do with that. But McCaskill rode their boat uh, you know, about 200 years ago from the Isle of Skye over to Egg. Now, this may or may not have happened because they, they say that they then claimed to have found the location for their distillery and built it right there. But then there's some talk about like having bought the location from somebody. So... Who knows? Either way, it's a nice little bit of lore. And even more importantly, it inspired this competition that Talisker uh, pays for or you know hosts every year where people come from the Canary Islands down to the Caribbean in a rowboat. It takes about 35 to 40 days to go across the Atlantic in a rowboat. Absolutely insane. 3,000 something miles. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about the distillery. So the distillery uses five stills. There's two uh, two wash stills and three spirit stills. And then they use worm tubs. Now, worm tubs are an interesting thing. I've talked about them a really, really long time ago on my Craig uh video that I guess I'll put up there. Um, whichever side it's on, I always forget. So the idea with a worm tub is it is a coil of metal, usually copper, or it's pretty much always copper, that goes into a big vat of water. And now this is used to help condense the whiskey, you know, at the distillate after it's been evaporated. It's helped to condense that over time. And it gives a very distinctive flavor. And in fact, about a third of the top producing whiskeys in Scotland use worm tubs. But a lot of them don't because they're extremely hard to maintain. And in fact, you have to do everything from sampling the water that the whiskey or that the tubes are sitting in to, yeah, sorry, testing the water to see if there's whiskey in the water, <laughs> which might sound like a good idea until you realize a lot of these things are open to the air and, you know, who knows what's falling in there. So it doesn't really matter. It, it's a, a nightmare to maintain, but it does give a very full bodied flavor to your whiskey. And so it's worth it, at least for those who want to do it. So let's talk about the different whiskeys that Talisker offers. So they have the Talisker No Age Statement versions, which are the Storm, the Sky, and the Dark Storm. Now, if you live in the United States, you're probably not going to see the Sky or the Dark Storm really anywhere. Uh, if you do, good for you. I didn't find it anywhere in my area. But the Storm and the Talisker 10 are both easily accessible. Now, the storm is the answer to kind of this popularity of putting out no age statements. They did it, you know, for the first time several years back, but it is pretty good. You know, honestly, as far as no age statements go, it's a pretty good whiskey. Now, this Talisker 10, we're going to go and do our nosing and our tasting right now. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, this whiskey is matured in American oak casks. It is also... Uh, peated to a fennel level of about 18 to 20, 22, somewhere in there. And it is uh, it has this interesting fact where it says that the spring that actually feeds the distillery, as far as the water, fresh water source goes, runs over some peat. Now, I have to imagine a lot of Scottish distilleries have this same situation, but they pointed it out specifically, so I thought I would tell you. I'm not necessarily here to be the scientist telling you what is and is not effective in your whiskey, more give you the information that the distillery is putting out there. So let's talk about this. This is 45.8% ABV. Uh, it is chill filtered and it is caramel color added, which, you know, take of that what you will. Uh, if you don't know what those things are, um, I'll probably do a video on them fairly soon. I did one on chill filtering, which I'll put up in the thing. Um, I don't think I ever really did one on coloring, but essentially you can color your whiskey so that if 
you know, everything kind of looks uniform, right? And chill filtering helps you to avoid any sort of clarity issues when you add water or, you know, chill it in any way. So I guess I just told you. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and nose and taste here. So, so I do like the smell of this one. Here's the interesting thing, though. This is so let me actually I'll get a couple of things out of the way and then we'll talk a little bit more. When you smell this, you are almost entirely smelling the ocean. It's it's a, a very it's a heavy like if you go to the ocean and you inhale through your nose, you're not going to smell that. When you when I say this smells like the ocean, I'm talking about salt air mixed with, in this case, kind of a seaweedy, very salty, really air. Um, but there's also that light peat. This is kind of the smell that some of your friends will say they don't like about scotch. Um, not necessarily just having a heavy peated, you know, sense to it, because although this is peated, it's it's more like a medium peat. This is this is what a lot of people say they don't like when they've tried a scotch for the first time, and then they say, Oh, I don't really like that it's smoky. Or oh, I it kind of like doesn't taste, it tastes like kind of iodine or or like band-aids or something like that it's similar to what you might hear somebody say if they try to lefroig although i'd say lefroig is is more peated sensations than this but let's go back to the nose so salt air for sure a little bit of peat actually a good amount of peat it's definitely there uh general sensation of this effervescent kind of airiness coming into your nose. That's a terrible descriptor. I just said there was air coming in my nose. <laughs> so this is, what am I trying to say here? It's fresh, you know, like it smells like, like fresh air near the sea, but it has more to it than that. And that's why it's not just standing on the beach. I hope that makes a little bit more sense. I know I've been doing this forever and you'd think to some degree I'd be able to elaborate on this more, but it's almost the fact that I'm trying to be more descriptive that's making it a little harder. So let's go into some more of this stuff. So it's it's got an iodine smell to it. It also does have a little bit of that band-aid-ness to it as well. So you're going to taste, you're going to smell some of those. Now, if you go a little deeper though, there's going to be a bit of orange to this. And you're going to get a little bit of fruit coming through. As this opens up to the air a little bit more, some of that initial peat, initial salt, initial ocean will go away. And you're going to start smelling something that's a little bit sweeter and a little bit fruitier, in, in fact. There is something that's reminiscent for me of... What are you... I want... Hmm. It's some sort of cookie that I'm maybe maybe a sugar cookie, but it's something heavier like than that. Um, I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with a sugar. Oh no! Um, I know exactly what it is. It is. Uh, pause for one second. I'm gonna figure it out. Ginger snaps. Ginger snaps is what I'm smelling. All right. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, I don't usually do that, but that one I had to get out there. All right. Let's go ahead and do a taste. Cheers. Mm. Mm hmm. Okay. 45.8%. You feel the al alcohol a little bit. It's, here's what you're tasting immediately. Band-Aids for sure. Iodine for sure. Then you're going into the smoke. Uh, the, the peated, peated has a different taste on your mouth in this one than it does in the nose. There's times where you'll taste uh, whiskey and you will say, in fact, like, you know, this tastes like licking a charred log. This is not this way. What you're tasting here is mostly oily hints of that peat, but there's a lot of salt going on as well. Now the oiliness here, if you remember, I said was from the worm tubs and that comes across, this is almost a perfect example of what a worm tub can do to a whiskey. Um, in fact, if I had to tell somebody what it was, I would say either this or Craig Ellicky. So there's probably a few other uh, that I would I would think, but this one sticks out in my brain. So the finish on this is very long. Actually, as I'm talking, it still is lingering there. Um, I often will go for a second sip a little sooner than this, but I'm, I'm giving it a minute to, to clear out. So let's let's go ahead and have that second sip. 
Mm. I just love when I enjoy one of the whiskeys that I'm doing here. Um, so this one has a bit of clove to it for sure. Have you guys ever actually bought cloves and then smelled them? I mean, you can use them when you cook, right? It's easy enough to get them if you'd ever want to. I mean, it's it's like going to cost you a couple dollars for the spice, maybe five tops. But then you'll know what cloves smell like and you just go ahead and like, you know, lick it. <laughs> maybe don't chew on it because it's probably going to be terrible uh, unless you decide to, to cook them. But experience these different flavors that we talk about. If you just taste along with me and you say, oh, that thing I'm not identifying, that must be what he's talking about. You're missing out because these are supposed to be your notes, too. You do I think you guys get my point. I did that for a little bit of time at the beginning of doing this channel. They were things that I had never tasted and I'd be like, oh, that's probably this. For example, anise, right? I can tell you what black licorice tastes like. I've had that before. But specifically, star anise is a thing and you can buy it. And if you buy it, it does smell and taste a little bit different. So go ahead and experiment with the stuff that you want. Very, I, I think that's good advice. So. All right, going back into this, let's have one more sip because I got off on a little thing. All right, I think I might have said it, but if not, black pepper is in there. Um, the oiliness is still very much there, but it's thinning just a little bit. It's as your mouth gets used to it, right? So the taste here overall is very pleasant. Actually, I guess I'll go into the overall. The, the taste here is very pleasant. This is a, the kind of bottle that you could have on your shelf all the time, and in fact, I'll just kind of get away with that. I'm going to give this a stock it. I think having this bottle on your shelves all the time as something that you could reach for when you might not be able to make a decision on something else that you want to have, or if you want to potentially introduce a friend of, you, a friend of yours into something peated, but don't want to go the Laphroaig 10 or even Ardbeg 10 route, this would be a good example of a whiskey to do. Now, speaking of which, my episode next week that I'm going to do, I kind of felt inspired while researching this episode. I'm going to do um, Talisker 10 versus, I have a few ideas, and I'd like to get your opinions. I'm going to do Talisker 10 versus Highland Park 12, I believe, or possibly versus Lafrog 10, or possibly versus Ardbeg 10, some combination of the four, or, or three, four, three, four. <laughs> Bunahaben, uh, Bunahaben might be in there as well. I, if there's something that you think would be a good comparison to Talisker 10, let me know what it is. And I will either go out and buy it, or if I have it here, I have quite a few bottles. I'm going to do that comparison next week. I'm going to film a versus because it's been a while and they're really fun to do. Anyway, all right, that does it for this episode of the Whiskey Dictionary. I'd like to just uh, say thank you first off to all my patrons, but more so, I just hit a milestone on my channel, um, $500 per month, which is fantastic blows my mind um there's lots of good stuff over there by the way i'm, I'm not going to hawk my own patreon here but what i want to tell you guys is that i hit a goal and one of that and that goal is uh if you notice a lot of distilleries have their own cocktails that they suggest it's a very very common thing and it's something i've always thought would be fun to experiment with like for example if you go to monkey shoulders website they have like four different cocktails where they're just imitating other people's cocktails but calling it monkey something or other like i kind of want to make whatever they have on their site and see if they're any good just follow their instructions make the cocktails do an episode on it that was a goal i set for myself at 500 dollars per month so I just hit that goal. Now, uh, I'm going to set some new goals. I'm going to set some new Patreon tiers, and I'm going to set some new um, just rewards for patrons over the next week or two. So if it's something that you'd like to sign up for, now is probably a good time to get in, or you might want to wait a week. Uh, I don't want to tell you to wait because, you know, compulsion, compulsions, but I'll be fair. You will probably get more for your, you know, bang for your buck if you wait maybe a couple more days because I'm revising them as we speak. This will probably come out, you know, Thursday, Friday. By the weekend, I think the new tiers will be there. So thank you very much for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary and have a great rest of your day. Cheers. I forgot I have that secret where if I like it, I drink it at the end.